Hi, this is Jimmy from The Productive Engineer, and today we're going to talk about the new feature that Notion just released, nested filters for databases. Nested filters allow you to create a hierarchical structure to your filtering such that you can get really granular in terms of the data you're looking for in your tables. This is great both for in the table itself as well as for when you create your linked databases to create custom views. It gives you more power and a little more depth in terms of what you can and can you know, what you can use to filter on and really be able to get to the data you want to see. It'll be especially powerful in larger databases. Now, if you're just getting started with Notion, you should really check out my video, my beginner's guide to Notion that teaches you everything you need to know to get started. Assuming that you, you start out, we, we assume you know nothing. And by the end of the video, you should be able to pretty much do anything in Notion you need to do. And the video is timestamped, so as this video is, so you'll be able to skip ahead to the sections that you want to see and get to the information you want to get to and learn what you need to learn. Now, if you like this video, please click the like button because it really does help my uh, channel. If you want to see more videos about Notion or other videos such from other applications such as Evernote, Todoist, um, the Google uh, Office Suite, Microsoft Office Suite, or any other apps that are in the productivity space, you should really be subscribing to my channel because that's exactly what I talk about. And if you want to be notified when I release a new video, please click the bell. Thanks. Get started. As you can see here, I have a nested filters demo table that I've created with a bunch of columns and a bunch of rows, each column having a different data type. And I'm going to show you how you can use nested filters to narrow down the criteria to only what you want to see based on a variety of criteria. So one of the things you might want to do with a table, you might find, especially this is like a task table. So what you might want to do is find out all the things that are not completed, that are urgent, and that are overdue. So what you can do here is come to the ellipses and click that. Scroll down to filter, click on the filter button, and then you'll be presented with this view, which is exactly the same way it was before Notion changed it. Now, the one thing you will notice is this drop-down arrow here. This is no longer just a button. This is a drop-down. And when you click it, you get the choice to add a filter or a filter group. For the purposes of what we're going to do here, we're going to add a filter first, because we want to narrow it. We want to remove every, before we get to our um, filter criteria, group criteria, we want to have a basic filter that takes out all the things that are completed. So what we're going to do is we're going to say where the current status is not completed. And what that means is I only want, for everything I'm going to do beyond this point, I only want the items that are not complete. I don't care about the ones that are already completed. Because this is what the idea of this filter is to show me everything that's urgent and overdue. So that's so obviously completed items don't fall into either of those categories. So once I define that, I can add a filter group underneath that, which will allow me to create a nested filter group. Or I can sit there and say, for everything that's here that's completed, that's not completed, excuse me, and where is overdue is yes. Right, because we want the items that are overdue. And it will add another filter here inside this filter group. So we added just plus the regular add a filter, not add a um, filter group. We're going to change this to and because it's not an or. The priority is urgent. So before I, you know, remove this, I want to show you what this is doing real quick. So this is, what's different here is the sort of grouping that you can create of a filter, filter group, uh, where you can have multiple things happening, almost like, you know, it's a nested, you know, in a nested way as a conditional. So rather than having this and this being one conditional, this could actually be a subconditional that you can resolve and then compare it to this. So here I'm saying everything that's not completed and, and then like almost like parentheses, if you want to think of it that way, if you're, you know, from a math background, where it's overdue and the priority is urgent. So when I click off of that, you'll see now that I only have one item showing. As you can see, it's marked as overdue and it's marked as urgent and its current status is not completed. It's actually in progress. 
So that's one way of using nested filters. I'm going to give you another example in a moment. Before I get started with the next example, if you felt yourself getting a little lost in how I set up my um, filters and you need more of a primer on filters, I actually did a link databases video, which I'll link up above, where I did some really basic filtering using the filter criteria. And now it'll give you more of an overview of filtering. If you feel like you um, need it, check out that video. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to filter things that are personal, that are have a tag personal, you know, and are either high or urgent and have not been completed. And the way I'm going to do that is just like last time, I'm going to come in here, click the ellipses. I'm going to come down to filter. I'm going to add a high level filter that's going to take out everything where the current status is not complete. That's the only stuff I want. It's going to take out all the completed items. And I'll pick that option. And then I'm going to create a filter group where tag contains personal, right? And as I start typing personal, it narrows it down to personal. Now here, I want it to be personal and I want to choose where the priority has two, could have two values. So what I will actually do is create a filter group, create an and here, and then I'm going to have a filter group where priority is urgent or priority is high. So what this is doing, if I, I'm going to try to walk you through it because I just covered a lot of stuff here. I actually created a second level of nesting. So if you look at it here, I have, first thing I'm doing is I'm checking to see if the current status is completed. And if it is, I'm not even looking, I'm looking for everything that's not completed. So, and then once I've determined that out of those, that data, I'm taking that and that's one thing that has to be true. And the, the sum of this all has to be true. So where first I want to find out everything that's personal, right? And then once I find out everything that's personal, I want to only take the things where it's either urgent or, and that's where my or is, high. So first thing, if you want to work from the most narrow out, first thing I'm determining is whether the priority of something is urgent or high. And then I'm determining whether it contains personals. And then I'm also comparing, saying only things that are not completed that are marked personal that are either high or urgent. And once I do that, as you can see, there's only one item that is, that is either urgent or high priority that is not completed, that is marked personal. So I think you can start seeing that you can get pretty complex in terms of how you filter your criteria down. But let's say now you're done with this filter, you see, saw what you want and you want to go back to the way it was. The way you remove a filter is by clicking the filter. When you come up here, if you already have a filter established on the table, you'll see a filter button appear here. Notice that that was not there when we didn't have any filters on the table. So we will click that filter. And what I'll do is you come over here to the edge here, to the ellipses, and you click that ellipses and you click remove and that removes that one. And then you can remove either each of these. So let's say I only wanted the urgent ones. I can just remove the high and I have urgent. If I want to remove this whole, this secondary um, item, I can do that. And then I can remove this again to remove all of it. So, and that removes it. And as you notice, now that I clicked off, that filter button is now gone. So we're going to do one more um, example just to try to really drive home the point of nested filters and why they're so valuable. And for this last one, let's have a little fun. And what I'm going to do is create a filter that finds all the non-completed tasks that are marked to me that are not low priority and have the tag revenge. So let's start by creating, clicking the ellipses to create our filter. Click the filter button here. 
We're going to create our first high level filter, which is going to simply take the current status, make sure that it is not marks completed. Then we're going to add a filter group. And we're going to say where the owner contains me. And then a filter group on that. Change it to and here. And we're going to go priority is not low. And as you can see now, all the lows are gone. And I'm going to add one more filter and tag contains revenge. And when I click that, you can see here real quick what, the what it's doing again. First thing I'm doing is I'm filtering for everything that's not complete. Then I, and then that has to be true. And then I have a sub um, filter group here where I can come in and say where the owner is me. And, it, and another group, another level of filtering where the priority is not low. And the tag contains revenge. So again, walking you through it from the inside out where it has a revenge tag and is not a low priority and is owned by me and the current status is not completed. And when you click on that, you can see that it's filtered out here. So you can look first, project not, is, it does not have the complete tag. It has a not start a tag. It has me as the owner. It has a non-low priority, in this case, urgent, but it could have been high or uh, medium as well. And here it has the revenge tag. So I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, these nested filters really expand the power of Notion. And you can really use them, especially in combination with linked databases to create a ton of custom views of your table data and really get it, be able to see the, your data in a variety of ways. If this video was helpful to you, please click that like button. It was it would really help out my channel. If you want to see more videos about Notion, Evernote, Todoist, Google Docs, Google Sheets, or any other of uh, the productivity apps out there, you really should be subscribing to my channel because it really that is what my channel is about. I have an extensive Notion playlist which you should check out. I'll actually link to it above. And um, if you want to be notified when I release new videos, please click the bell. Thanks.